Hi, Zero community. Welcome to So You Want to Be an Advocate. Thank you so much for joining us at this year's summit. You may have heard that some of your fellow attendees are visiting their members of Congress this week. That's true. They're doing it in person, but that doesn't mean that next year you can't do the same. And in fact, in the time between now and next year, we've got tons of opportunities for you to be an advocate. And in the next short talk, you're going to get to hear about some ways to do it and more importantly, why. I'm joined today by our friends from Pfizer, Janelle Flowers and Stacey Relliford. And I'm pleased to just jump right in and throw it directly to Stacey. Thanks, Allie. And hello, Zero Advocates. Um, my name is Stacey Relliford, and I am the Alliance Development Manager at Pfizer for the past five years. And before that, I worked in nonprofit lobbying and advocacy for over 12 years. And I'm most proud um, recently to have helped advocates on the ground in Illinois pass the prostate cancer screening coverage bill. So this cartoon is a great illustration of how messy the um, lawmaking process can get or how, how confusing it can be. And so I think um, a lot of times there's an intention by a legislator or by a group of legislators, and then there's the end results. There's um, good intentions, there's unintended consequences, um, all, all pointing to the fact that in inclusion by patients and the people that the laws impact is important. So your advocacy can help clear a lot of this up um, between what legislation is meant to do versus the end result or maybe what's even needed. So just a, an important reminder of why we all need to be involved. So why advocacy? Um, a lot of people don't want to get involved in advocacy because they think it's politics or they're not political. And I would um, say back to those folks that advocacy is not politics. Advocacy is too important to ignore and to not be engaged in because a lot of decisions about your health care and your health are happening beyond your doctor's office. They're happening in state legislatures and in Congress. And small actions that you can take can create big change. And you know, some of the things that are being um, decided by, by legislators are things that in fact impact your insurance, um, copay design, screening coverage, all kinds of things that will impact your daily life. And so if not you, then who? And if not now, then when? And so a lot of times I think um, you just gotta make that jump and, and get engaged. So who makes the most effective advocate? Obviously those who have a personal connection with the issue. So for example, in Illinois, when we worked on the prostate cancer screening bill, um, there was a survivor who was able to um, uh, testify and, and talk about the importance of screening. And actually the, the bill sponsor, the legislator himself was a survivor of prostate cancer. So those, those folks had a very deep and personal connection with the issue. And I think it made a big difference in the success of the legislation. And so those who could be impacted, I think a lot of times um, patients who could be impacted, whether it's it's, you know, they need better coverage or they want more people to get screened. I think those are always um, important advocates to add to the cause. And anybody who wants to make a difference, right? I think a lot of times some things are out of our control and it's, it's, it's uh, reassuring sometimes to get involved in advocacy because you can make an impact. So what can you offer elected officials? I think a lot of times, um, you know, regular people like us are sometimes saying, well, what do I have to offer for this, you know, very complicated and sometimes intimidating process? And so I think a lot of times just explaining to patients and advocates that you have a story to tell, you have a community perspective, um, you know, how would this be received in your community? Who are the players? You know, those, those sort of things that you can offer to a legislator. And, you know, you are the expert on your own experience. And so you have a lot of knowledge about your experience about, you know, your particular issue. And I think those are all important things that you can offer elected officials. So what are some of the ways that you can get involved in advocacy? So a lot of these are kind of the tried and true methods of, of over time. I mean, decades of, of letters and phone calls, I'm sure you're all familiar with, but <clears throat> the reason that they're tried and true is because they do work. And so, especially letters and postcards, that's kind of a throwback. Um, not many of us get those in the mail anymore and legislators are in a similar boat. And so those are still useful. 
you know, patient stories. My colleague's going to talk a little bit more about how best to use patient stories in district visits. So visiting your legislator back home, so not at the Capitol, which sometimes is logistically easier. Um, and also, I feel like they pay a lot more attention um, to their constituents whenever they're meeting them at the, the coffee shop in their town or you know, that sort of thing versus, you know, a hurried visit at the cap at the busy capital where everybody else wants their attention. So, you know, these are just some of the ways that you can that you can engage and get involved in advocacy and, and building relationships with your with your state senator or your state representative or your member of Congress. It's always a helpful long term thing that can be very fruitful because you're not always going to them asking for something. You're just trying to build a relationship and get to know them and have them get to know you and your story. So patient stories, they matter and they matter a lot and they explain the issue like nothing else can. And so, you know, whenever we have <clears throat> lobbyists that are, are meeting and, and pushing for a bill, they have fact sheets and they have studies and, and data, but they don't have the stories. And so to me, a patient story can really explain an issue like nothing else can. And it really educates and impacts lawmakers. And I think it sticks with them a lot longer than, than a fact sheet. Next slide. And so when you do meet with a legislator, there's just three things to keep in mind that you wanna walk away and say, I checked all three of these things off my list. So tell them who you are. Why, are, why is it important for you to meet with them, for them to listen to you, you're a constituent, you're a voter, you're a survivor or a caretaker, um, tell your story. So why are you there? What's your connection to the issue? How does it impact you? And really stick to your message. I think a lot of times in these kind of meetings, it's easy to get sidetracked here, um, but don't get sidetracked. Make the story stick, but don't lose their attention. Like many people nowadays, um, attention spans are very short and it's important to stay concise and to the point. And the last part is really, really hard. I think um, if anyone's ever done fundraising or anything like that, making the ask and then waiting for the answer is sometimes the trickiest part, but this part is so valuable for, for the staff that are working for the bill for you to give that information back. Will you support House Bill 123? And just getting a yes or no, or even a maybe, is so valuable in the process of trying to pass the bill because then you know where that legislator stands. So just a few takeaways in, in conclusion here. Advocacy is worth your time and you have the power to make things happen. So don't ever discount that you're just one person. Attention spans are shrinking, so you have to be concise. Um, use those traditional advocacy tools because they do work. And resources are available. I know Zero has a lot of advocacy resources that you can use, whether it's talking points or pre-made emails, those are all really ready to go. And your story can move an issue forward. Just one good story can really make a bill go from, from beginning to end. And make the ask. Don't, don't waste a meeting with the legislator and not walk away knowing where they stand on your issue. And that's all I have. Thanks, Stacey. I think you could say make the ask 10 more times. Right? <laughs> and we would, and nothing is better for a staffer, right, than a meeting where you chat and you hear each other's stories and you feel so good, but they never make the ask. And so the staffer never has to say yes or no. They just get to walk away with everyone having these great feelings, um, but nothing actually accomplished. So make the ask, make the ask, make the ask. So thank <laughs> you very yeah. much. And I will hand it over right now to Janelle Flowers. Thanks, Allie. Um, hi, advocates at home. I'm Janelle Flowers, um, a colleague of Stacy's. I am the director of activation here at Pfizer. And, you know, Stacy shared a lot of really great tips on how to be a wonderful advocate, why to be an advocate, and some traditional ways that you can advocate. Um, she, she ended on some of those in-person meetings that um, many of your um, peers are having, as I understand, Allie, right, this week, um, in person with their lawmakers. 
Um, and as we talk about activation or um, how to share your story publicly, um, maybe there'll be an opportunity or you'll arrive at a solution that you can still act, um, advocate from home through potentially some media. So let's talk more. So when you're thinking about your story, it's, it's great to start asking some questions of yourself. I'm sure that Zero has um, some of the legislative topics that they're discussing this week that they've shared with you all. And as you're reviewing those, you might start asking yourself, have I been impacted by this? Or is there another uh, story I have to tell about something that may have happened to me when I went to the pharmacy counter for my medication? Questions like, I thought I already paid my deductible. Why am I being asked to pay it again? Or um, my insurance company is suggesting I use a medicine that my doctor didn't prescribe first. Uh, there's a lot of different questions that you can ask yourself to put those kind of talking points of what your story is together and then decide how might be the best way to share it. And if you're unsure of that, then I would, again, suggest reaching out to Ali or others at Zero, and they may be able to help you with that. Let's go to the next slide. So when it's time to tell your story, there's a few different ways now in the media. There's the traditional media. Um, you know, I um, get my local paper in Columbus, and I know that if I flip to the back, I can read some opinion editorials on some of the topics that, um, that, that matter to me about healthcare. And that may matter to you. Um, there's opportunities even still, and we see some interesting stories that are, are on the, um, the television, on our local news programming. And what I think is important to remember about traditional media is that, you know, while not everybody is still getting the paper, there's now digital access to these local papers. Um, it's, it's nice to share stories. You can even share stories that are printed in your local newspaper through newer methods. And our lawmakers depend on the media a lot for their own election process um, and to hear what's going on in their community. And so if there's an opportunity and if you're comfortable doing something like print or uh, writing your story down on paper or being interviewed by a reporter, you know, keep in mind, I think, why is, why, what is the reason that you're telling your story? You wanna share your situation. You wanna highlight that problem. Some of those legislative issues might be the solution and kind of putting that out there to remind uh, both the reporter and the public, you know, why you're sharing your story and that they can help to change something too. So the newer method of doing that um, not so new anymore, I guess, but social media is a powerful tool to use in your advocacy efforts. Um, there are some sophisticated ways, such as uh, digital advertising, which you know sometimes larger organizations might do or larger coalitions may share activation alerts. Um, I know in my own scrolling through my Facebook account, there's been a time where I've uh, seen an ad that asked me to click on it. Um, and reach out to my lawmaker for, you know, a certain issue on a certain issue and voice my support or opposition of it. Um, there's some sophisticated ways to do that, but there's also some more grassroots style of digital activation, um, which, um, you know, can come through just, you know, a simple email strategy or a personal video. Um, and I, just have to share that video is key as it says on this slide, but it's, it's because you can see the person, right? You can see the person who has their own personal story. It's really impactful if you're comfortable sharing your story through video to do it in this manner. Um, I was recently reading that social videos actually generate 1200% more shares than text and images um, image content combined. That's a huge reach. Um, also, those that you're trying to inform, maybe others who might have similar stories to share with their own delegates, um, people retain 95% of content that comes from a video image than they do um, versus 10% of just reading a text of something. 
So uh, I, I was actually, Stacey, I see you're a little bit surprised at that number. I knew that it would probably be higher. I had no idea it was actually that much higher. Um, so I think a really powerful um, statistic to put behind maybe, you know, doing something either live or recorded like we are right now um, to share with uh, people who follow you, with your lawmakers um, and the public to inform them on the, on the topics. And then just kind of to put the cherry on top, again, why social media it matters so much. Four and a half billion people are using social media still, Facebook and YouTube. Um, you can't find a company or an effort that probably doesn't have social media like a YouTube channel uh, spelling out an issue. Um, and nearly a third of Americans regularly get news on Facebook. You know, we talked about people are still reading the paper, um, but more often than not, some, some Americans, most Americans are getting some sort of their news from, from social media. I know I even, and sometimes it comes faster through, through those methods too, right? Such as Twitter, you can easily and quickly find out what's going on right now on Twitter. So when you're having an advocacy day, when you've had a meeting with a lawmaker, when you've written an op-ed that got posted in your local paper, amplify that by using these social media tools. Um, and I think you'll get a lot farther together that way. And I'll actually echo what you said, amplify it by posting that story or that video or whatever it is on your social media, and then tag zero or email that link to us and let us amplify it, right? Because we have the chance to then share it again and make sure it gets even farther. So that's great. I love it. I'm going to talk briefly about how you can get involved with Zero because I'm going to ask a question later. I know that everyone's first answer will be reach out to Zero, and I'm going to take that answer by uh, just starting right here. So at Zero, we have many ways you can use your story to join other people um, in the prostate cancer community. You can promote access to prostate cancer care, to screening, diagnosis, contribute to the development of new treatments and innovations, and you can help reduce health disparities. And the first thing is show up at the summit, right? We do this every year. We send advocates either in person or virtually in person this year. And hopefully that's the future. Um, meetings with their elected officials or their staff. Um, some folks here are attending this year. We certainly have folks going to the Hill in person. But if you're not, if you're watching this video because you have no idea what advocacy is and it's your first time at a zero summit, please plan to join us next year. It's the bigger, biggest prostate cancer patient advocacy event in the country, and we use it to move forward investment in the prostate cancer research program, um, prostate cancer education and outreach at the CDC, a bill to eliminate cost sharing for prostate cancer screening at the federal level, and other priorities that will help us to get closer to the end of prostate cancer as quickly as possible. If you aren't attending those meetings, you can get out your phone right now. Oh, wait a second. Get out your phone, text SUMMIT23 right there at the top of the screen to 52886. It'll give you a direct link to that action center. It'll look much like what's on your screen right now. From there, you can very easily send emails to your members of Congress in support of those same asks. And it will take you less time than it takes me to finish the rest of this talk. The summit happens once a year. Um, but this year, we're offering folks who couldn't join us in person not just the chance to send emails and make phone calls, but also to join us for a virtual Hill Day. That final date is still to be determined. It'll probably be the end of March, but please keep an eye on your emails um, in the Summit app, if that's where you're watching this. You'll get an alert when that date is confirmed and we'll have a chance to, to reach out, email advocacy at zerocancer.org and tell us you wanna join those meetings. We'll let you go ahead and meet virtually with your members of Congress and their staff in just a couple of weeks to amplify the conversations we're having right now. At Zero, we're constantly giving our advocates new opportunities to use their voices. Clicking all the way through any of those links will also sign you up to receive those opportunities, or you can email us at advocacy at zerocancer.org. We can answer your questions, talk about other ways to get involved. We can you know, help support you as you write an op-ed or a letter to the editor. Um, we can explore all kinds of different ways to share your story and make sure that it's that your story benefits the next generation of prostate cancer patients and families. 
And we are not only active at the federal level. And we've had a couple of opportunities in the last year for prostate cancer advocates to testify in state houses, like Stacey mentioned. Um, John Salata, if you're watching this, we were thrilled to have you testify in Illinois in support of prostate cancer legislation there. Uh, we've asked folks, I think, already in 2023 to send emails and make phone calls in Texas. Um, so there are a million ways you can get involved, state, federal, and we are here to walk you through it. Right? You don't have to know anything to get started. And right now, a lot of those opportunities are virtual, but they won't always be. Right? Virtual is here for good. It is a new tool in our toolbox and a chance to be impactful in more and bigger ways. But we're also you know, sending folks to their district offices, right? During, especially during the August recess to meet with their federal elected officials. Um, I think we're seeing more people actually, I think last week in Texas, we had folks going to the Capitol in Austin, Texas to talk about legislation there. So join your peers, right? Join other folks in the prostate cancer community and take that unique story that you have, your unique experience and use it in support of the larger good. Right? We can use policy to make the world better for everyone with prostate cancer and their loved ones. And I am going to ask a question to I will end the slides and ask a question of my two co-presenters here. And I just wanna ask if you could challenge everyone watching this to do one thing, and it can't just be reach out to zero because I already said that, um, but to do one thing to start on their advocacy journey, what would that be? Well, I'll go first. Um, I would say find and know who both your member of Congress are and your two state legislators that represent you, because that's the first step of building a relationship with them and making yourself familiar. And so when you do go to a Hill Day or an Advocacy Day, you might actually already know those people. So it's the start of a great relationship. Oh, that's a great one. And can you also, in that, in that plan, when you look up your legislators, also register to vote and make sure that you yeah. vote because they can see that. <laughs> Not who you Very important. For, right? What, yeah. what happens in the voting booth is private, but the fact that you voted, yes, that's out there. All right, Janelle, what have you got yeah. for us? I also think, you know, get to know them and follow them on social media. <laughs> we just talked about um, how important it is to kind of know what they're doing, where they're going to be. You know, you might have the opportunity to meet with them outside of um, a capital day if you do that too. Um, mm -hmm. And then also, you know, I would, I would follow, um, I would follow Zero. I would, I would follow um, other organizations that are interested in the same policy solutions um, that might help to solve a problem or an issue or an experience that you had. Um, I know I'm saying more than one thing, but I will also say. Think about, um, you know, even those those moments that might not have seemed um, like a big deal at the time, but have continuously presented themselves as a challenge and access for um, healthcare. Um, think about those and and ask somebody if you're unsure if there's a solution or if this is a problem others are trying to fix too. That's great. And don't forget to text Summit 23 to 52886 and to email advocacy at zerocancer.org so that you can join us for Hill meetings virtually um, in about a month. But Stacey and Janelle, thank you so much. I can't say how much I appreciated your presentations and I'm sure that all the folks watching did too. And I hope they'll take those words to heart and that we'll get to meet them in person at next year's summit or you know, or at any point in an advocacy journey, right? We'll take them anytime, anywhere. So thank you. Thanks, Allie.